back everybody. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto bringing you guys another video. So today we're going to be taking a look at VeChain. What is POA? So for those of you who are interested, POA stands for Proof of Authority. So I've got a VeChain uh, Medium article pulled up for you guys. We're going to be taking a look at that, discussing a little bit about the consensus mechanism for VeChain. So if you guys do find some value and if you enjoy this video, please be sure to drop a like. It definitely lets me know that you found some value. Also, if you're new to the channel and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Click that notification bell also so you can get notified when I post a new video. And if you guys have any questions about this content or if you wanted to start a conversation, uh, let me know down in the comment section. Be sure to comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. And uh, let's get into it, guys. So to get things started, I just wanted to show you we're taking a look here at the overall market. So Bitcoin dominance at around 69%. So, you know, kind of still at around that 70%, big key even level. We're gonna see whether we're able to break above that 70, retest it as support, or if we are going to see some liquidity flow into these alts. Uh, we are not there yet necessarily. I think the market is still trending sideways at the moment. Bitcoin's are around about 10,300. So we're coiling into this triangle pattern at the moment with Bitcoin, and we're just going to see whether the price does decide to break up or to the downside. A lot of the same things happening here with many of these altcoins, almost like a no trend situation, with the exception of a few, of course, just popping off here. But for the most part, major players are just seeing sideways movement. So taking a look at VeChain, uh, I found this uh, Reddit thread on the forum for VeChain, and one of these uh, questions was, how does POA work? So POA is proof of authority, and I wanted to show you guys an article. So this article is actually linked here in this thread. I'm gonna go ahead and link the article in the description below, so if you wanna check it out, you can. Uh, but there's, a, there's an article here talking about POA, and so there's a TLDR, uh, too long, didn't read. The proof of authority consensus model overcomes many of the obstacles presented in proof of work, proof of stake, and designated proof of stake. Uh, it's also delegated proof of stake. Uh, and practical Byzantine fault tolerance. To make a platform that is that has low computational power requirements, no requirement for communication between nodes to reach consensus, and is optimized for system continuity. This is the ideal solution for enterprises relying on a timely and secure, secure consensus. At its core, designing the consensus model of a blockchain is one of the largest decisions needed to be made. To many, the consensus model represents scalability and the level of decentralization the protocol endures. However, long term, the importance of the government's model has more value than the rest. Recall that the underlying design philosophy of VeChain's governance model is that neither a total centralization nor a total decentralization would be the correct answer, but a compromise and balance of both would. When building the world's most used enterprise-grade blockchain, none of the mainstream protocols such as proof-of-work, proof-of-stake, and delegated proof-of-stake are suitable for our system. The design proof of authority provides the governance needs that VeChain Thor's consensus protocol and enables the ability to prevent anonymous block producers. To qualify as an applicant to be an authority masternode, which is AM for short, of the VeChain Thor blockchain, the individual or entities must voluntarily disclose their identity and reputation by extension to the VeChain Foundation in exchange for the rights to apply to be ones who validate and produce blocks. It takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. That's a quote from Warren Buffett. So in a nutshell, with that quote and how that ties into it, you if you are going to be in a position of validating blocks on the VeChain or blockchain, you are going to have to sacrifice some form of privacy for yourself. You are going to have to put your reputation on the line. So it is in your best interest to maintain the validity of the blockchain and to make sure that all actors are acting with positive intent. So that's an interesting concept. Um, it is when their identities and reputations are at stake that all the AMs can be held accountable and incentivized to work in the best interest for the network's growth and security. To achieve this state, each VeChain Thor AM will go through a strict KYC procedure to satisfy the foundation's minimum requirements. 
To summarize the main characteristics of the POA protocol, um, some of these points include re low requirement of computational power, no requirement of communications between AMs to reach consensus, and system continuity is independent of the number of available genuine AMs. So proof of authority in detail. So let's go into some of these key points here that are discussed in the article. So some of these topics include when is a block produced, who generates the block, and how do you choose from two canocule, that's an interesting word, or legitimate blockchain branches to establish the trunk of the blockchain. All right, so the first question, so when is the block produced? So blocks within the VeChain Thor blockchain are produced every delta seconds. The initial release of the protocol, the delta is set to 10 seconds. This increment of delta is an estimation of the usage of the VeChain Thor blockchain at the official launch. All right, so who is generating the block? So the VeChain Thor POA protocol ensures that every AM has an equal opportunity to be selected to produce blocks. However, to satisfy security constraints, we do not want the order of AMs to generate blocks to be entirely deterministic. To achieve this, VeChain Thor utilizes a deterministic pseudo-random process and the concept of active-inactive status for AMs to decide if an AM is a legitimate option to produce a block with the height and the timestamp. All right, so guys, um, full transparency, this article goes a lot into the math behind the system and the consensus protocol. So to keep things simple and in layman's terms for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and link this in the description below. So if you did wanna check it out, you can. But this is talking about the consensus protocol and why it's in the best interest of the consensus protocol, the POA, to be able to do the things that it does in terms of who gets the generate or who generates the next block and when the block is produced. So let's scroll down a little bit further here. It gets kind of technical, but the final question we need to answer is how to choose between two uh, canocial blockchain branches to make the trunk. Since there is no computational competition in POA, the longest chain rules do not apply. Instead, the VeChain Thor blockchain chooses the branch that is witnessed by more AMs as the better of the two. So to do this, the protocol computes the accumulated witness number for block as this equation. So again, it's very technical. But I think that this is interesting to note because there are a lot of key things that are different from proof of work for consensus protocols. You know, you got Bitcoin, you've got Litecoin, you know, proof of stake, you've got things like NEO, you've got things like ontology, all these different types of consensus protocols. So in theory, the POA protocol is vulnerable to the so-called 51% attack. Now what a 51% attack is, is when the computational power of 51% of the network is held by a one group of, uh, or one group of miners or uh, validators in this case. So now, in a POA, the 51% means that more than half of the current available authority masternodes would collude. Typically, a 51% attack is going to happen when there is malicious intent. So in reality, the POA consensus significantly increases the difficulty of carrying out such a 51% attack. So there, are, there have definitely been some thoughts taken into consideration with regard to things like this. Another common attack is the long range attack. So this is one of the most common ways to attack a blockchain. So this attack exists when the attacker takes an old block, creates a new blockchain branch, and then tries to broadcast it to the network in an attempt to override the existing trunk. Very often the fabricated branch is much longer than the trunk so as to fool the consensus protocol. Normally, the long range attack cannot be used to attack the proposed POA protocol. The below figure illustrates a long range attack to POA where the white block represents the trunk while the gray blocks fabricated branch. On the one hand, since there has to be a delta second interval between two consecutive blocks, it is impossible for the attacker to produce a much longer chain. On the other hand, POA chooses the trunk based on the accumulation of the number of active authority masternodes. In that sense, to replace the current trunk with the fabricated branch, the attack has to gather more than half of the available masternodes to produce a larger total number of existing branch. 
the attack then becomes a 51% attack, which has been described above. Okay, so guys, this goes into a little bit about the benefits, the pros and cons about POA. So I think for what VeChain is attempting to build, this is probably the best type of consensus protocol being that there isn't huge energy requirements for being able to run the entire blockchain on a node. You know, you've got a little bit of transparency in that if you are going to run an authority master node, you do have to provide your identity to the foundation. So, you know, going back to what it quoted here, so neither a total centralization nor a total decentralization. So take from it what you will. I think that this kind of encompasses the best of both worlds. I hope you guys did find some value from this video. That's pretty much what I have for you guys here today. Again, if you did find some value, I would greatly appreciate a like. Let me know that you enjoyed it. And if you do have any comments or suggestions for future videos, be sure to leave those down in the comment section. All right, you guys, I appreciate you watching. Until next time, take care.